What's up and welcome back to another live stream with Gizmo Slip Tech. So today we're doing a Lenovo Yoga Book 9i. This is the world's first, as I know, true dual screen laptop slash ultra book. This is an incredible, I think, step forward for gaming laptops and laptops in general. I mean, you can't use this for gaming, but of course it's an ultra book. So the focus is really not gaming, but my channel tends to be heavily performance focused and gaming focused. So we're definitely gonna be reviewing this Lenovo Ultrabook from the perspective of a potential gamer who might want to use it for casual games or potentially for game streaming. So we're gonna test some of those services as well today. Now, in today's live stream, we're going to, of course, unbox this dual screen notebook. We're going to take a look at everything that comes with it in the box. We've got uh, a, mouse pad, a mouse, a stylus, a keyboard, a stand. Um, and then of course the dual screen notebook itself. And one of the biggest questions about this new form factor is what is the dual screen software look like? How well does it actually work in real life practice? That was the biggest question I had when I saw this uh, at, at CES and all of the announcements around it. I was like, that could be extremely janky and uncomfortable to use or it could be awesome, all depending on how the software is integrated and how well it's designed. Um, so we're gonna be putting that to, to test today in a live stream. So you're gonna be able to literally see exactly how it works. Now I have been using it the last three days quite a lot and I repackaged it all back up. So it's just like how it was when I had it in the, uh, the box when I first took it out. Um, but I have tested it, I have installed software, I have updated it um, and I have kind of gone through and found some of the flaws with it and I'll be pointing those out today. This live stream is sponsored by Best Buy. So I'm gonna be a big, big shout out and thank you to Best Buy for sponsoring this live stream. And there is a link in the description down below. Now this is the official page for the Lenovo Yoga Book 9i. So if you want to, there's a link in the description. You can go buy this or order this right now. If you do use the link in the description, it does help support me as a content creator. But as always, there is no pressure to buy um, anything that I'm reviewing, including sponsored products, right? So this is a sponsorship from Best Buy directly. I am free to say whatever I want about the Lenovo Yoga Book. That is extremely important to me as a content creator. I need to have, uh, I guess, editorial autonomy. And so I can always be honest with you guys about any flaws I see with the product today. So that's what we're going to go through today. And I'll be pointing out the things I noticed during the last couple days of using it, both the good things and the bad things today. Going over the listing here. We're gonna go through all the specs here before we take it out of the box. So let's go ahead and do that now. This is the Lenovo Yoga Book I'm 9i. So yes, the Lenovo Yoga Book 9i. It's a two-in-one, so that means this thing can fold backwards over itself. Um, so you can go in tent mode or just tablet mode. It has two 13 0.3 inch 2.8 K dual screen OLED touch displays. So both the top screen and the bottom screen are touch enabled and pen enabled and it does come with a stylus pen. Now this comes with a i7 1355U processor and this is a 10 core 12 thread processor with two performance cores and eight efficiency cores. So that means this, uh, this new processor, this 13th gen processor, is one of the latest and greatest Ultrabook processors that money can buy, right? So if you're looking for uh, high performance in an Ultrabook, this is gonna be close to it. Of course, there's always uh, other options out there in the Ultrabook category. You've got AMD processors, and you've of course got thin laptops like the Razer Blade 15 that I recently reviewed that have a full-fledged i7 processor in it that have more cores and threads. And so there, there's a plethora of options out there, but for an Ultrabook processor, this is gonna be able to get a lot done. The two performance cores will allow strong, really strong single-threaded performance. And then of course, because it has the eight efficiency cores, eight, you know, that brings it up to 10 cores, 12 threads total, that's gonna really let you do a lot of multitasking and productivity things uh, like video rendering. And uh, of course the single threaded performance for things like Photoshop is also gonna help boost performance because those two cores can boost 
quite high. Now this comes with 16 gigs of LPDDR5X RAM at 5200. So it's got a fast RAM and 16 gigs is enough pretty much to handle almost anything you're gonna throw at it in Windows, unless you're gonna do extremely memory intensive applications, in which case you may want 32 or 64. Now this, this unit comes with 512 gigs SSD. It's a gen four SSD and it costs 1999. Here is the different modes. So you can set this Ultrabook up with the keyboard literally on top of the bottom display. And this sets the bottom area down here into a touchpad mode, which is really cool. It does this all automatically as you'll see here in a little bit. And this, this keyboard is a tactile keyboard and it's wireless. So you can move it around including separating it from the, the laptop here. And this is not magically being held up in the air here. This is, there's, there is a stand that is included with the Yogabook 9i. So it can go vertical top over bottom and sit on a table vertically like that. So you can have dual display functionalities. Now, in addition, the, the stand can hold the Yogabook up in portrait mode. So both of the displays are in vertical portrait mode, allowing you to, uh, for example, write a Word document or a research paper on one display while looking at your resource, uh, your, your research sources on the other display, which is just it, this, this thing would have been absolutely incredible back when I was in college, I would have absolutely loved it in college. I originally thought when I saw this, it was, it was a bit gimmicky. Like I see, I see uh, massive L says, seems like a gimmick no one will buy. But I think after you watch this live stream, you'll probably actually think, holy crap, that is very versatile. I personally, after using it here for a few days, I, I will say that I would love to see a gaming laptop in this style of form factor. Obviously they're showing some game here. This is not really, I think, an ideal game to even play. This is, this is the Asphalt 9. Um, you can obviously play it on the laptop. I did download it so we can test it out today if you want. To me, a true gaming laptop would, experience would be really awesome on this because, um, for example, I've done a lot of dual screen gaming myself. When I played MMOs, I played Black Desert Online a whole bunch. I loved to watch Netflix or some kind of streaming service um, while playing the game. And if you have this notebook, this Ultrabook, you can do that. You can have your game up on the top screen and then like HBO, Netflix, whatever uh, streaming service you want on the bottom screen. And it's awesome. You can like, it's totally possible that even with this Ultrabook using game streaming, cloud gaming streaming services. And I'm gonna show you that today so you guys can see uh, exactly uh, how that works and all the different functionality that you can have with this device. Cause it's kind of mind blowing to me. And that's coming from someone that is a traditional laptop gamer. And this thing obviously can't fully replace a gaming laptop in every sense, right? 100% a gaming laptop has a lot of advantages over this laptop. And we're gonna talk about those pros and cons. If you are a gamer, should you consider picking up the Lenovo Yoga 9i, uh, Lenovo Yoga Book 9i. First of all, obviously this does not have a dedicated GPU. It has an Intel integrated GPU inside of the CPU. And it's not a terrible GPU. You can actually play quite a few legacy games at 60 frames per second, or at least hitting playable frame rates above 30 frames per second um, very consistently, even in some modern titles, okay? So there is some gaming opportunities using just the onboard integrated graphics. Now it's not gonna be high resolution, high refresh rate gaming like you would get with a laptop that has a dedicated GPU. But if you use a uh, cloud gaming service like GeForce Now, uh, the PlayStation streaming services, the uh, Microsoft Xbox streaming services, those services do allow you to uh, stream the entire, you know, whole gameplay right to your laptop display without, uh, you know, it's high refresh rate, high graphic settings, and it's very smooth and it's generally responsive as long as you're not playing a competitive game. Right, if you're just trying to play casual games, that's all you're trying to do. It's responsive enough and smooth enough at 60 frames per second to be able to handle that well enough to truly enjoy gameplay. And we're also gonna test uh, five PC games 
uh, native on the, the integrated graphics. So it's gonna be partially a test to see how far has the 13th gen um, Ultrabook integrated GPUs go, uh, come so far. This, you know, in this generation, can you game with them? How much can you game with them? What are the limitations of gaming on an Ultrabook without a, a dedicated GPU? And then of course, uh, a little bit of a test of cloud gaming. We'll test like, I don't know, one game like Cyberpunk or something. Of course, we're gonna do our display test. We're gonna do a camera test. This has a five megapixel infrared camera with Windows Hello. And so we're gonna go through and test the webcam. Uh, and then we're gonna do a speaker test as well. This has a four speaker system on it. Um, and it's a sound bar that rotates with you depending on how you have the laptop oriented. So here we are. We've got the Lenovo Yoga logo here at the top. Lenovo here as well. Got some spec stats here on the front. PureSight 2.8K OLED display. So they're both really high resolution displays. So more than 2560 by 1600 and they are 16 by 10 aspect ratio. So two 16 by 10 aspect ratio displays. Touch screen with Windows 11. Uh, so this utilizes a lot of the new touch features of Windows 11. I'll show you some of those. There's quite a few really interesting integrations to make the dual screen functionality just really seamless um, and function way better than you would think a traditional dual screen works. And these would also work on say dual monitors. A lot of these features would work on dual monitors, but also some of these features are specific to the yoga book um, and from the Lenovo software suite where they added the ability, for example, to um, extend an internet explorer page from the top to the bottom. And it really enhances your ability to like browse the web, having it go across both screens. It's kind of, it's, I, it's kind of mind blowing in a way, obviously, um, it's not totally game changing in the sense for just browsing the web, but it, it is nice. And I think it's a nice improvement to a web browsing experience, having it be just be so huge. It's like a giant newspaper in front of you. There are four speakers and a five megapixel IR camera on the back here. We've got a little bit more information about the laptop itself. We've got the i7 1355U, 16 gigs of RAM, 512 gig uh, SSD and 13.3 inch 2.8K OLED. And we've got Windows 11 Home on here. There we go. All right. All right, so this opens up just like this. All right, and we've got this little cover here. We'll take that back. Here is the laptop. It is in a like kind of a, a wrapping. Let's take out the power adapter first. This is a entirely USB-C and Thunderbolt 4 Ultrabook. It is, uh, has three Thunderbolt 4s on it with no additional uh, ports or anything. This is a USB-C power adapter here. Let's go ahead and open this up. I'm not sure how many watts this is. So you can see it's a Lenovo 65 watt power adapter. And it's obviously going to be uh, very portable from a power adapter perspective. Yeah, so it's about, about six feet long, which is a bit short in my opinion for a power cable. Um, you know, it's cause it's a dedicated power cable with nothing like no like secondary cable coming off of it but that means that it may be a little bit harder for you to reach the wall outlet and of course you can always get another USB-C like 100 watt charging cable or something um, that's longer and you'll be able to plug that in from a longer distance so it's not like these are very expensive you can definitely get another power adapter if you need to but I did struggle to plug this thing in uh, even just in some of my use in the last few days, plugging it in by the table, I had to extend the cable like, and it was basically like almost tight to the laptop, which is not great. So depending on how you, how far away your outlet is, this may be a little bit short for you. You might want to invest in another cable. Unfortunately, this is integrated, this end is integrated directly into the adapter. So you cannot just switch this out for another um, cable. You're gonna have to actually get another charger with a longer cable to attach to it. They're not super expensive, but it's still something to keep in mind. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at the laptop. Dun, dun, dun. So as you can see, it is gonna be very portable. The uh, bottom wedge, the lower wedge is a little bit thicker than the top wedge. I don't know if you can see that. This lower wedge right here, especially at the back, is a, you know about twice as thick as the top display. But overall, this is gonna be a very portable, easy to take with you laptop. 
And yeah, it does not have any headphone port on this guy anywhere. It is just the power button here, the webcam privacy shutter, power button, webcam privacy shutter, two Thunderbolt 4 USBs right there. So two Thunderbolt 4 USBs on the right side. And then on the left side, we've got our a third Thunderbolt 4 USB-C. And you can charge it on either side of the laptop. You don't have to be plugged in to any specific side. As far as I'm aware, it was working for me on either side. So that is nice regarding the power adapter length. Um, did make it a little bit easier to actually utilize that. Now, um, I'm gonna go ahead and open it up, give you a quick look at the dual displays, and then we'll move on to the rest of the laptop. So this does have a bit of a lip, but notice that you can't just lift this up very easily. It takes, like you almost do one finger lift, but it's not quite a single finger lift off. They have a lot of additional hot features or quick features here. So these are some features that Lenovo um, and Microsoft use basically to, to figure out how to um, optimize the user experience with two full displays on the laptop. So you can set the keyboard. There's a, there's a, a separate physical keyboard that you can set up and type tactilely uh, on, the, on the laptop itself. You set that on the upper half and the bottom half becomes a touchpad. If you set it on the lower half, then the upper half of the screen becomes a secondary uh, display, but it's just half of the bottom is the display. If you tap with eight fingers at once, so four fingers on each hand, if you tap with eight fingers at once, it brings up a virtual keyboard. And if you tap with three fingers at once, it brings up a virtual touchpad. And the touchpad works surprisingly well. Here is the first container. Let's see what's in here. So this is the keyboard case slash stand. This can fold, this has magnets in it. It can fold and it snaps together. This forms a keyboard stand that you can put the laptop into. It's extremely quick and easy to set up. You just flip it out, close it, and it's ready to have the laptop inserted uh, right inside of there. It is magnetic, so it all snaps together or is like wedged together really nicely. In this box is the keyboard itself. The keyboard uh, layout, I do like the keyboard layout overall. The secondary functions here uh, along the top are the primary functions. So if you use uh, the volume up, down, brightness up, down, all of these, they are the primary key press. So you actually have to press FN plus like F2, F3 in order to access the secondary FN functions. And that's the, way I, that's the way I have it set up on my Razer. That's the way I like to have it set up in general on these keyboards because it's just so much easier to turn the brightness up and down the keyboard. It's just less clicks, less worries because I'm, I'm adjusting the volume and brightness of the display quite a bit more often than I am pressing the FN keys in my opinion. That's the keyboard. It's, it's very thin, very light overall, and it is magnetic on the back here with little rubber feet and this will snap onto the laptop. So that way it's uh, very sturdy and stationary on there. Here is the last box. So this has the stylus and this is a battery powered stylus. I'm guessing you're gonna have to occasionally replace the battery on it, but it is pressure sensitive and very precise. There are a lot of uh, different applications you can use with this if you need to do drawing or like, for example, you wanna watch something at the top and then draw or have your image that you're drawing at, on the top display and draw on the secondary display. You can totally do that and it works really well. We're gonna show you using, I'm gonna, I'm gonna use the stylus for you today so you can check out and see uh, the pressure sensitivity and all of that as well. I think there's tremendous value, I guess, in, in the laptop package simply because it includes the keyboard, it includes the kicks, you know, like the, the stand that sets it up. It includes the stylus, you know, and if you were to buy one, a lot of other tablets, like the, the, the Surface, the iPad, whatever, all of those are usually extra to buy these accessories, to get these accessories. You're gonna spend hundreds of dollars extra to get the keyboard, to get the stylus, and it's included out of the box. And in addition to these accessories, you also get a fancy smancy Bluetooth mouse. This Bluetooth mouse was also in the box that came with it. And so all of these accessories are included for the $2,000 price point. Obviously $2,000 is obviously expensive, but this is also an extremely innovative product. And I'm not saying that it's 
definitely worth it for everybody, but for someone who thinks they're gonna use the dual screen functionality, there's a lot of value in that. Let's get this set up and show you the different layouts that you can, you can have. So this bottom back of the keyboard here magnetically attaches to this and it's, so you can see it, it actually lifts up. It's very strong magnet. So uh, it feels very sturdy, like it's part of the stand here, which I really like that. And then the laptop itself, all right? So we're gonna open this up. So it just went ahead and detected with my face with Windows Hello. You just set it right in there. And then look at how sturdy this is. I can literally just press. I've, you know, I can basically just kind of press on it and make adjustments to this. The stand, of course, is you got you kind of got to hold it a little bit, but just because of the weight, the heft here. But this hinge up here is extremely sturdy. Like I can, I can have it. It's just like sitting there, like stable. This hinge is one of the most stable hinges I have seen. And so when you're when you've got it set up like this, and you're say you're using it in like touch mode, you want to expand this, right? So you do five a five finger tap and it just expands it across the whole thing, just like that. A five finger tap, it brings it up. If you wanted to move this window up here, down to over here, it's quite simple. All you have to do is come down here and click on the thing on that window. So like, uh, like you click on the start menu icon on the window you want it to move to. So like when I, I click on the, the Internet Explorer icon at the bottom, it'll jump the window down to the bottom. If I wanna move this window down to here, all I have to do is click on it down here, it hops down to here. So if you've got the top window covered up or you're in a full screen streaming on one screen, you can easily move windows that are behind that screen to the top or to the bottom, depending on what you need um, for it to be. Another key feature is using three fingers, you tap, it creates a touchpad wherever you tap. Now I've got this touchpad. I can move it around, resize the touchpad to be bigger. I can resize it to be smaller. Um, I can have it be over top of the Windows Start menu. So it's in the truly in the corner here. So if I, did not, if I did not have an external mouse and I just had the keyboard here, I could just be using the mouse like just like this. To click, to move around. It makes it very easy. And it clicks and taps just like a normal mouse like a normal touchpad, trackpad. It, it makes it so that like, I guess it feels multifunctional in a way that almost all other laptops of this nature are not. And then you wanna get rid of it, boom, you've got a full screen again. When you got an external keyboard, when you have an external mouse and keyboard, you can just get rid of it or add it back at will. I love that. It's so, it's so convenient and it makes it so that you don't, you feel like you don't have to use just your finger to do touch tap commands, which is a great place to be in my opinion. I do kind of wish that this had like a headphone port for people that want headphones, but at the same time, I can kind of understand why they wouldn't want to include it. Cause you know, when you've got a laptop set up on a stand like this and someone takes that headphone cable, you know, it's gonna knock everything over. So. I can kind of understand why they would probably don't want to put one there. Plus then, you know, they, they, they managed to get three USB-C Thunderbolt 4 ports up here. So there is obviously uh, USB-C headphones out there as well. So you could just use one of those and plug directly in if you don't have a hub and you just want something that's wired in. This right here in the center, this is your speaker sound bar. So let's go ahead and do an audio test next. For this audio test, I have got our sound decibel meter today. It's so wild having so much screen real estate. It's inc it's just, for me, it's insane. It's a bit overwhelming because it's an ultra book. And yet I feel like I have more screen real estate for working than I do on my Blade 18, which has an, a huge 18 inch display. You can see it over here on the left. It's at least more functional. And in terms of actual screen real estate, it actually probably is more square inch total than the Razer Blade. So it makes it so functional. And I guess for me, it makes it so that this laptop can be one of the best productivity laptops I've ever seen. Moving on, we're gonna do Peter Spacey Roar first. This has the same software that the Lenovo laptops typically have for uh, changing your EQ. And I have messed with these audio settings quite a bit. Uh, I find dynamic to be the best overall, but if you want a specific sound, you can always do game, movie, music, or voice or something. Uh, if 
you think it's going to be better, but Dynamics seemed the loudest, and that's the way it's been on most of the other laptops that I've been on as well. Beautiful. Okay, so you can see that right now, when I'm talking quite loud, it's about 80 decibels or so. The room ambient noise is about 42 decibels. Okay, so this is Peter Spacey Roar. Audio set to max. Let's go ahead and see what it sounds like. Okay, so this thing clearly has a good amount of bass. It's got moderately clear mids and highs. Um, it's not super, super loud, but it's very loud for an Ultrabook in terms of speaker quality and overall volume. Um, clearly quite nice. Uh, first impression, let's move on to Faded Aeon and see those mids and highs. Very nice overall. Not quite perfect, but it's pretty dang close. All right. This is uh, La 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 Love You by Deuce Williams. So... Again, the vocals are sounding quite good. The, the, the mids are there. You got a punchy little like unk to the bass. Overall, I am, I am very impressed with the speaker system. I think it's around like an 8.9 probably, maybe a nine, not quite. Like it's not, it's not, I don't think it's quite as good as like the Blade 18, the Blade 16, not quite as good as like Apple's music speakers, but it's pretty dang awesome for a thin and light notebook. And I love the fact that the speakers are es essentially omnidirectional because this speaker bar right here, as you move this around, right? So you can rotate this thing. All right. As you move it around and say you're watching something, you got the speakers right here. And so when it's on the desk here, they're still firing the speakers are still firing towards you. If you want to watch it like a movie, you can flip it upside down and have the speakers facing upwards, but still facing roughly towards you. Um, if you're in presentation mode, like uh, trying to present to someone else, you could have like a PowerPoint where you control the PowerPoint on the left side here. And then on the back side, you can show the PowerPoint on this side. Um, there's all kinds of potential ways you could use this, this setup. Um, but definitely one of the, the best potential ways is in a traditional laptop form factor where you're, you're like this, all right? So we've got the steam up there in the top. I tap with eight fingers and boom, it's turned into a more traditional laptop interface. So I can use the start button there. I can browse around. I can click on stuff. Um, I can use this just like two finger scrolling, or of course I can click up here to two finger scroll. And I wanna get rid of this. I can press the X button here in the top right. It closes that down. And now we've got a traditional, back to traditional two uh, screens again. Uh, if I want to, I can bring this up. I can have a touchpad right here. I can expand this with a five finger tap. Now I can scroll across both of the screens. It's really, really cool to me. But most importantly, I love the way that Windows integrated all of the different uh, browser 
options here now, or like, uh, I guess, window options, right? So you can, you can hover over the expand button now in Windows, and this allows you to Windows basically select where you want the window to go. So you click that, uh, you click that one, it'll split the screen between two windows. You can set it to be in one quarter of the display. You can set, you know, like the media player to be on this side and you could set your office to be in the lower right side, whatever you want it to be in the different windows. But you have like, you can, you can separate them into quarters. You can set them, rate them into halves now. You can set, you can separate them to quickly jump between the two screens. Again, by clicking on the Windows start icon, you can make things jump between these two screens easily, quickly, and on the fly, which I'm just, I'm loving that. Like, it's so cool to me for multitasking and productivity purposes. That's kind of everything I think you probably need to know about uh, window management. Let me show you something else that's really important. A lot of you are very curious about this part. So what happens when you set the keyboard up here on this? So it notice that it's, it's synced down onto the keyboard right here, uh, sorry, onto the bottom shell. And notice that it automatically turned into a touchpad down here on the bottom. If I lift this off, it expands into a full display again. I set this down, it switches it right here into a keyboard. So this area right here is not active anymore. So you can put your wrists on the, the display here and now you can start typing or using the keyboard just like a normal laptop. So now I can start typing on the keyboard just like a normal Ultrabook. So if you're on an airplane or you're in like a train or something and you can't, um, you don't wanna use the whole stand to make it double tall, you can just use it like a normal Ultrabook and it feels not quite as solid as a normal Ultrabook because this is only magnetically attached, right? But uh, overall, it does feel quite good for quickly switching between the modes. You just lift this thing off, set this back into here, drop the keyboard right back on, and shabam, we're back into double tablet mode. And you wanna set this back to the way it was, you just grab this, grab the keyboard off of the stand, set it right back on top. Now we're back into laptop mode. It's so quick and it's all so seamless uh, in my experience. Like so far I've had not quite no bugs, but almost no bugs in terms of quickly switching between the different modes. And that's largely why I am really liking this from a like usability and functionality side of things. One of my biggest downsides, one of the biggest downsides in my opinion for this keyboard is the fact that it does not have backlight illumination. There is no backlight to it. I'm guessing for battery life purposes, because this is an entirely wireless keyboard, um, there is no backlight. And I think that's gonna be a bummer for some people. I would prefer it if it had a backlight. Um, there's a volume mute button, volume down, volume up, microphone mute, brightness down, brightness up, display, so monitor display adjustment. So if you wanna switch from extended mode to dual mode um, or duplicate mode, you can do that. Windows settings button, Windows lock, disabling or enabling the touchpad, which is kind of, I guess it pops up, open the, it, you know, it popped open this touchpad right here. So you can kind of, uh, I guess, request it to open up if you want it to open up uh, with that button, which some people would like that. Uh, let's see here, what does this do? So that button opens the, basically the lower keyboard top panels here. I believe you can set these to pop up with different applications, but when I press the F11 key, this is what pops up. So you can have your email pop up and like the news, for example, are two options that you can have pop up there. F12 brings up the user center. This goes over all the different ways that you can use the laptop in the different productivity modes. So you've got dual screen interaction. So they have uh, meeting notes. So you could have like a Zoom call, you know, you can have a Zoom call or something at the top here, taking notes down below. You could obviously write with a, a pen as well if you wanted to have the keyboard attached. There is study mode, so you can have, you know, your research, your Word document on the right, and you have your keyboard. So uh, just to, to demo that type of mode, all we have to do is go like this, and bam, we are now in portrait mode. Very easy to switch, swap over into it. I love this, like this, 
would be amazing if you're a college student. Like mind-blowing productivity also for work people that need multiple screens. And this is why I would love to have this in a gaming laptop form factor because I mean, I love to game, but I also need to be productive too. And I do a lot of spreadsheet work with the gaming laptop list and I do emails and I do, you know, like sometimes I have to do multiple screens and it really can help me having multiple screens. Uh, and that's partially why I love having an 18 inch display on my blade so I can easily split screen stuff. But this is even better because I can split screen stuff within two 13 inch windows. And it's just, it's really great for productivity. There's a mobility mode where you have the keyboard up on top of the uh, lower screen and there's collaboration mode they want and entertainment mode where you can, this is where uh, some of the gaming features and functionality of dual displays really are not being taken advantage of, right? Because there's very few dual uh, display laptops out there at this time. So there's only a handful of games that have developed for them. Uh, Asphalt 9 is one of the games and I was figure I can show you that um, coming up here. So for features, this allows you to, this allows you to quickly see uh, like a tutorial on the different functionality that Lenovo and Microsoft have put into this uh, laptop. We've got Windows management. So this talks about how you can drag the different laptops. Let's see, can I bring it down here? Drag window to set layout. So it shows you that you can drag the window down into a little uh, icon. You've got focus click. This is a feature you can turn off or turn off, uh, turn off or turn on. And this is where you click on the start bar to make it happen. Dual screen window layout, where you split screen, I already showed you all this. Uh, windows flick, where you flick the window down or up um, to make it minimize. And this is one of the ones that I had a little bit of trouble with. Let's see if I can get it to work. See, like I tried flicking it down. There it goes. It Wait, not quite, it didn't quite do it. So. Yeah, so I, I don't know, with the, with the Windows Flick thing is not working. It could be, do I have to enable it in the settings here? So I do have to enable it in the settings. It's not working. There it goes, okay, finally. There we go. Nice. Okay, so we got it working. Overall, I like the ability to just tap on the start bar to switch windows. I think that's probably the way I would do it. It's obviously, gonna work doing the flick most of the time once you get used to it. Um, cross screen browsing is by extending uh, that window across both of the windows. Uh, so I can show you that again here. So I'm just gonna move this windows up, this window up to the top here. And I'm gonna tap with five fingers. It extends it all the way across both screens and now we're good to go. I really like the functionality of this and I would just love to see a gaming laptop with this form factor and style. You can tilt this top display back really far and everything is still very stable on the stand. I really love how they designed this stand to be so stable. Definitely one of the best features of this laptop is the overall like thoughtfulness that Lenovo had when they designed this product. Right now we're measuring the color gamut on the top display. I want to mention one of the issues that I had with the laptop while we we're doing this brightness test, I had a problem with the speakers audio popping a little bit, but only when I was downloading Steam games. So when the, the Steam games were downloading at full tilt, for some reason it caused these Bowers and Wilkins speakers to have a slight audio crackle or pop. Um, and I, I don't know why. I don't know if it's if, they're, if you're using Wi-Fi at maximum speed or something, something's going on. So taking a look at the results for display test one, we got 100% of sRGB, 100% sRGB, 97% Adobe RGB, 94% of the P3 color gamut. And keep in mind that my Spider 5 Elite tends to underestimate by a few percent, like usually six to 8% in that range. This means that we're basically 100% P3 color gamut, 100% Adobe RGB, with this display, that, that is awesome to see. Our brightness level, we are, goes all the way down to one nit, less than one nit, 0 0.9 nits, um, with 870 to one contrast. And at the high end, the highest brightness, we got 374. So we didn't quite break 400, but I gotta say this, this display seems brighter than that to me, because, 
when I'm using it, it seems so punchy and so easy to see. And I know this might have adaptive display brightness. And the fact that I'm in a darker room right now might mean that it's not putting out 100% of the possible brightness. Maybe I got to shine a bright light into this and we'll get a brighter brightness test. I'm actually curious about that. Let's go ahead and do it one more time. I'm going to shine a brighter light right into that, right into the ambient light sensor up there and see if we get a brighter result this time. We still got 376 nits doing the, pointing the lights at the display sensor. It says use HDR. Let's try turning on HDR. Let's go ahead and try testing it one more time. All right, so in HDR mode, we got 368. So we actually got a little bit less in HDR mode. Now that is very interesting. Like I swear, these these displays though are really good. The contrast ratio, the brightness, the color gamut, they look phenomenal and just awesome. Now let's try doing the lower display. Pretty much OLED is the king of laptop display quality. And that's true for this, this laptop as well. Interesting, so when I'm doing the display test, it is jumping to the top display. So in this scenario, in order to get it to display on the bottom, I probably need to do um, change it to second screen only. So I just pressed the F7 key and it brought it down to this display only. Now display settings reminder, Lenovo here have set up a reminder for how the laptop it's, they basically have a default display setting, so it allows you to easily um, restore to the dual display mode um, at the click of a button. So if you want to restore default settings to have both displays being shown, you can just click that restore default settings. Um, you could also just, for now, I believe, just click to ignore this or hit retain modifications. Um, or you can say, don't remind me until restarting, and then it'll kick back and change it back to how it was when you, when you restart the laptop again, which is, is nice. Cause maybe you switched it all up and now it's like incorrect and it's oriented incorrectly or whatever. Being able to quickly restore default settings on a restart or with a touch of a button is nice. I do like that. We're just gonna click the X for now and we're gonna bring this down and we're gonna do our test on the secondary display. And for this one, I might need to hold it. Our display stats for our second display, 98, 100% of sRGB, 98 of Adobe RGB, 95% of the P3 color gamut. And for brightness and contrast, we got 377.5 nits and 377,000 contrast to one. Um, that is insane levels of contrast and basically the same display stats we saw on the top display, only two and a half nits brighter here on the lower display. Obviously super, just like absolutely excellent display quality. If I had criticisms from a gamer's perspective, it would definitely be that these displays are not 90 Hertz refresh rate or higher. So I would love to see 90 Hertz refresh rate displays. Um, we know that there are 90 Hertz refresh rate OLEDs with this same resolution and size because we are a very similar size because we do have some of those in some of the other gaming laptops this year, some OLED 90 Hertz displays. In addition, I would love to see a dedicated GPU from a gaming perspective. That would just be awesome, like an RTX 4050, 4060, 4070. From a content consumption perspective, the displays are basically as good as they can get from a laptop perspective. From a video game perspective, they're gonna be awesome for casual games. They're gonna have very fast response rate because they're OLED, but they're not gonna be super smooth gameplay because it's only 60 Hertz refresh rate. Like it's gonna be smooth, but not as buttery smooth as like 120 Hertz or higher or 90 Hertz or higher display. We're gonna go over the Lenovo Vantage software. So this is the Lenovo Yoga Book 9i. System information is good. We are up to date on our security. This does have McAfee, it does come with that. I am not a fan of McAfee personally, uh, just cause I hate getting pop-ups and having software on my system that can potentially slow down or hinder performance. So I usually remove any kind of antiviruses. So let's just, oh, and when we, when we remove this, it's gonna make us restart our system, I believe, so. You know, having McAfee on the system could negatively impact our CPU performance in this benchmark. Um, I usually remove this beforehand, but I wanted to show you guys uh, in the live stream that this comes with a little bit of bloatware. 
and you might want to remove it. So that's basically why I'm showing this. On this homepage, they kind of had some ads on here. I did not love that. I wish, uh, you know, the, the traditional Lenovo Vantage software does not have any ads as far as I remember um, on the gaming laptops, like the Legion laptops. And I'm not a huge fan of this. Like I wish there was, it was cleaner. All right, McAfee right here. We got 10% off this, whatever. Come on, just give us our system controls and all of that. Now, if you want to control something on the system, you gotta go to the dashboard button up here. This is technically the dashboard, but you actually need to go down here and go to the dashboard dashboard and go or go to the device section here. And you can go to like, for example, power. This is where you can adjust your battery capacity uh, target. You can enable and disable rapid charge. You've got overnight battery charging, so it only tops it up right before you use the laptop all the way to 100%, which is, can help your battery longevity because you don't want to keep the laptop at 100% all the time. Otherwise, it can damage your lithium ion battery. So um, the, this is nice. You can do cons conservation mode, which keeps it only to 75, 80% capacity if you want to make it last longer. In terms of if you want to keep this laptop for 10 years, and you want your battery to be decent, you definitely want to keep it to 75, 80% at the most on average during the, the course of the laptop life. Now, performance for this is controlled right here in the Lenovo software. You go down to power here in the smart settings, and then you scroll down a little bit, and there are power and performance settings. You've got intelligent cooling, battery saving or extreme performance. We are gonna be doing all of our benchmarks and testing in extreme performance mode today to give us the most possible performance. Now, in general, this thing is very quiet. The fans can spin up just a little bit um, and the fans exhaust are right here along the top near the speaker bar. So you, you don't really feel any fan noise. You don't really hear much fan noise. Typically, maybe if you were in a dead quiet room, you would hear the fans a little bit, but it is pretty minor overall. Flip to start enables you to turn on your computer when you open the computer lid, same as pressing the power button. Interesting, you know, I would probably turn that off. I am gonna turn that off right now, but that is that is very interesting. Always on USB allows the USB connections to be enabled for charging when the laptop is uh, turned off or asleep. Um, when the computer is in sleep, uh, hibernation or off mode. So if you're looking to charge your smartphone from this 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 laptop battery, when the laptop's off, you can keep this on and you'll be able to plug in your USB-C. Um, there is a Lenovo Vantage toolbar. Thankfully, this is disabled, so you don't have to use this. Um, by default, there's also a Lenovo battery widget, which you can turn on and off right here. I am glad, again, it's disabled by default. I appreciate that Lenovo, for the most part, ha keeps all of the stuff out of the way. Now, under audio, this is your Dolby audio um, that you, we changed in the... The system, you can change it here as well. We have it set to dynamic. There's also microphone. You can disable and enable and your Microsoft microphone volume pickup. The display settings are pretty interesting and pretty advanced actually in here. You've got eye care mode for uh, reducing your blue light to reduce eye strain. I don't mind blue light at all, but some people really prefer to be able to reduce your eye strain. Um, you can change your daytime color temperature. You can make it warmer or more blue. I prefer to keep it blue um, myself. Now there's OLED panel settings, which is really interesting. This can help prevent, for example, um, battery power consumption and potentially increase your battery life. You can you can dim the task bar after 30 seconds. So just the task bar itself will be dimmed um, if you're not using the laptop for 30 seconds. You also have background dimmer. So if you have one display that's set to the background, you can set it to dim after 30 seconds. Um, you also have display dimmer, which is the whole display. You can have that dim after 30 seconds, a minute, however long you want. I just think it's really cool that you can do a task bar dimmer because that should also help prevent any OLED burn in over the course of many years of use. Camera privacy. Camera privacy is no longer supported through Lenovo Vantage. Please use your camera shutter if you want to use the privacy. So here's the camera. I have the privacy shutter, I believe right here. I just flip the shutter and that shuts off power to the camera so no one can access or view the camera. We can flip that back on and there's the camera right there. We're gonna test out the camera here in a moment. Input and accessories. You've got your mouse touchpad controls, mouse controls, caps lock, advanced settings, zero touch login enables you to improve your workflow by automatically logging you in on your computer using Windows Hello, zero touch lock. This feature will dim the display and lock the computer when your user presence is not detected. So this can um, automatically lock 
your laptop if you if you're not a laptop for a little while. And then you know when you sit down, it'll automatically go back in using Windows Hello. It's pretty. It's kind of awesome actually. If you are worried about people using your laptop without your knowledge or consent, performance boost, network boost, and all of those, this stuff, I'm not worried about. This is probably not really relevant. And it's still, it says right in here that it's unavailable for this device. So under here, under device, if we want to update our system, we go to system update and we can hit check for updates. This is how you get your BIOS updates or any key software updates that you need for the Yoga Book 9i. Um, so just right here under device system update. We're gonna quickly install process lasso. This is a tool I use to try to ensure as much benchmarking fairness as possible. And what this does is it prioritizes certain processes inside of Windows to be above normal or real time or whatever you wanted to set it to be. But basically this allows the process here, what Cinebench R23, to take priority over anything else that might be going on in the system. And that's gonna help provide, like I said, fairness for this benchmark. So we're gonna go ahead and run. So let's go ahead and do our CPU multi. And we're gonna pull down our information here as well. So we've got our two P cores right now are doing 3.5 gigahertz. Our eight E cores are doing 2.7 gigahertz. Our CPU temperature is doing 83, 84 degrees. Uh, CPU package 91. Overall package being of course 91, 92. And it's starting to heat up a little bit more as we're as it's continuing to, to workload. Um, and it's safe all the way up to 100 degrees Celsius. Now our CPU package is pulling 35 watts and you can kind of start hearing that CPU fan. Do you hear it? 35 watts is um, you know a pretty good amount of power for an Ultrabook. It says it peaked at 42 watts. And yeah, that's a good amount of power for an Ultrabook. It's right in line basically with maximizing the performance of this CPU. And we are getting close to thermal throttle. It looks like it's gonna thermal throttle at 95 degrees. And let's see what our CPU cores are doing right now. So we've come down from 3.6 gigahertz. Now we're at 3.49, 3.5 on our P cores there. And that is still very good, but not quite as good as what it was when it wasn't thermal throttling. 8,287 points for our first test. Let's go ahead and test it a few more times. For a ultra portable, ultra book, dual screen, super thin, super light. This is a good amount of performance. Of course, this does not have an NVIDIA GPU. So if you're using like a lot of Adobe software, um, there's no AMD or NVIDIA GPU. So you do not get any CUDA core boosting for video rendering or editing, but this does have Intel quick sync technology. So you can utilize that, which in some applications is actually faster than NVIDIA CUDA core. Um, boosting. So Intel QuickSync is like a special media encoder built into the CPU that allows you to quickly encode video files in things like Adobe Premiere, Handbrake, DaVinci Resolve when utilizing certain codecs. So you have to use the correct codec and then having Intel QuickSync active and it will massively speed up your rendering speed even in this laptop right here. It's definitely something to keep in mind. We are now doing 3.1 gigahertz 2.9 gigahertz, it went down to 2.6 for a little while, 2.9 right there. Um, so our P cores are dropping a bit lower in terms of performance. Our E cores are at 2.2 to 2.3 gigahertz. Um, so these are some pretty low numbers overall, a uh, little bit lower, obviously very low numbers compared to a gaming laptop, 7,305 right there, 7,305 for our second run. So our performance as we are thermal throttling and as we are being power limit throttled to be a lower power limit, looks like we're, we're basically being power limit throttled down to about 25 watts of power. As we are being power limit throttled down to that lower wattage um, in our long power limit, we are basically seeing that slightly reduced performance. Um, I mean, it's, it went from what, 8,200 to 7,300. Let's see what we get on our third run. And I'm pretty sure this is basically the, gonna be the consistent uh, CPU rendering performance of what you're gonna be able to get 
on this laptop, if we were to do a 10 minute test, we would probably get this level of performance on average overall. Notice that now that we're doing lower uh, power limits, our temperatures are also much better. 76 degrees on the, the core temps, 78 or 80 degrees now, it was 78, 79, um, now 80 degrees right here on the CPU package temps. Our average temps, if I were to just refresh this so that it redoes the averages, our averages are gonna be right around the upper 70s, lower 80s, and our package power is gonna be right around 25 watts, just a hair under 25 watts, like around 24, 23 watts. Our P core is right now doing 29.5 gigahertz. Our E core is doing 2.1 gigahertz, 7,099. This is still gonna be enough to do a lot of stuff, but it's not gonna get it done as fast as a more powerful CPU, and it's not gonna be able to multitask as well as another system. Now we're gonna go ahead and unplug we're gonna go on battery mode and we're gonna run this again. We're gonna do a battery only test. Now that we're on battery only mode, I'm trying to listen. I'm not really hearing the fans. So 2.99 gigahertz across the P cores, basically right at three gigahertz during battery mode. We're still hitting 76 degrees on the, the core temp, 80 degrees on the package. And we are doing 24.3 watts of power. So the same amount of wattage, same amount of power, um, at least, as the long power limit right here on battery mode. Now we did not boost up to the 35 watts that we were getting initially during um, when it was plugged in, but it's still obviously very good performance for battery mode, very similar levels of performance. It should be right around 7,000, maybe just a hair above 7,000 for its um, Cinebench R23 score when on battery mode. Right at 24 watts of power, 7,293. So we actually went up a little bit when on battery mode. Interesting. Wow, that's that's a very good camera. All right, we're gonna go ahead and take, let me just take a couple photos. Uh, can I zoom in? Yeah, just zoom in right here. Um, they are not grainy, they are not noisy. Maybe a little bit of noise here in the back, but for a webcam, that is very close to say like a front facing camera on a smartphone, not far off. You can really see the detail in my beard. This is very similar to my Blade 18 five megapixel webcam. This is better than all the other gaming laptops that I've tested for webcams. Like I said, the only one that's really competitive with this that I've tested so far is the Blade 18. And this might be a little bit better than the Blade 18, honestly, for webcams. So this might be the best webcam I've tested so far this year. Okay, so this is me recording a quick five, 10 second video, and I'm gonna go to and start typing on the keyboard, and let's see what this looks like and sounds like when I play it back. Okay, so this is me recording a quick five, 10 second video, and I'm gonna go and start typing on the keyboard, and let's see what this looks like and sounds like when I play it back. So it's definitely a bit wispy on the microphone pickup, uh, maybe a little bit too gainy. With some adjustments to the microphone and a little bit of post-processing, the microphone would probably be quite a bit better, but it's actually pretty good. That's actually surprisingly good, um, especially for a just a laptop. Like, <laughs> that's not quite as good as a smartphone, but it's not far from a smartphone quality. Um, as far as front-facing smartphone cameras. Not as good as the rear-facing for sure, but very similar to a, 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 a front-facing webcam. I wanna mention that there is a link in the description. If you do decide that you want to buy this YogaBook 9i, there's a link in the description that takes you to Best Buy. This is sponsored, this is a live stream that's sponsored by Best Buy. Thanks to Best Buy for helping support my channel. I mentioned this at the beginning of the live stream, I'll mention it again, but there's a link in the description. It does help support me as a content creator if you do use it, so thank you very much. Um, and if you do use it and, you want to, and you're trying to support me, it does need to be in a trackable browser like Chrome or something without ad blockers when you do go buy it to support me. But again, no pressure to buy this thing. Buy whatever you think matters to you and if it sounds good to you, and then I'm, just I'm just trying to show you. That's my goal. As a reviewer, I'm just trying to show you what it can do, show you what uh, my experience is like with this thing, and then you decide from there if this product is correct for you or not. Right here at the top, we have our, our stats. We have, this is for the Intel XE graphics card. We are utilizing the GPU at 99%, so basically 100%. We're pulling 24 watts of power through the Intel XE GPU. We've got 1300 megahertz right now on the GPU clock speed. And this, 
I don't know if it's overclockable or not. I haven't tried that. It might be interesting to try that. Our VRAM is at 3,405 megabytes used. I believe this utilizes shared VRAM with the system RAM, which right here is saying 11.6 gigs are used of the LPDDR5X RAM. So I, as far as I know, it's a, it's a combined unified RAM uh, within the integrated GPU. That's good and bad in the sense that some games are using a lot of VRAM if you're using a lot of high resolution games, but in general, we're not gonna be running games at high resolution with this. 1,800 overall, 810. 1,602 for our graphics score. Our CPU score is actually pretty good at 6,886. But of course, you, can't, you don't really run games off of the CPU, maybe strategy games, but really your graphics score is what matters for the vast majority of games. So what this tells us is that you're only gonna be able to play legacy titles at 60 frames per second, or at least even above 30 frames per second, um, or modern games at low, low settings and lower resolution. So we're gonna go ahead and test um, like five games now. We are in video mode 1280 by 800 resolution. We are triple buffered with V-Sync because it kind of needs it. We're gonna do no anti-aliasing. Everything is gonna be on low or disabled. You can see right now we are getting 39 FPS. So we are in a playable range of FPS for sure. Our FPS is only 10 though for our 1% lows, which is, you know, that's that's far from ideal, right? You know, so I can, I mean, I can definitely play this game, but it's not to the same level. It's not to the same level that I can play, you know, your traditional uh, gaming laptop. Like I love having a hundred plus FPS in Apex Legends. If I'm gonna play this game, I usually am a very competitive. And so I want, you know, I'm looking for that 100 FPS experience. And I, you know, right now we're also on a Bluetooth mouse, which is just not as uh, responsive as an actual gaming mouse. From a gaming perspective, I would definitely be using a gaming focused mouse that has lower latency. Um, and wow, actually our FPS is pretty dang good at 54. I'm actually really impressed with the FPS in this firing range, doing 70 FPS, 60 FPS. I know that when we actually get into a real match, I'm pretty sure it's gonna struggle a bit more. Let's go ahead and hop into a real match now. Also, I'm gonna go ahead and plug in my USB-C gaming mouse. Yeah, I don't know what's going on with Apex servers right now. They're not working correctly. So we're gonna move on to the next game. We'll try 1440 by 900. We're on low settings, full screen. You can see our FPS here on the lower. Right now in the menu, we're doing 100, but like 110. But we'll see what we get in the actual gameplay. So we are in the game right now. We're doing 130, 100 and... So we are hitting some pretty good FPS numbers just just spectating right now. 200 actually, okay, I'm a pretty... <laughs> I'm actually a little bit more impressed. Um, obviously CSGO being one of the easier games to run out there, I'm hoping. It actually feels pretty good right now. It's gonna be a miracle if I get a kill. It's been forever since I played CSGO. All right, so here's a smoke. Oh wow, we're actually doing over 100 FPS in the smoke. What? I was not expecting to be over 100 FPS in the smoke. Oh, we got God from the side. Okay, so this is actually playing really smooth. I think the 1% low is close or above 60. Shockingly smooth, actually. You could probably play at a higher resolution, to be honest. Maybe depending on how complicated the map is, though. Now, of course, this is an OLED display, so it's extremely fast response rate display, but it's not a, it's not a particularly uh, smooth display because it's only 60 frames per second. I'm gonna turn up the audio a little bit louder. Jenna. I love you. <laughs> Overall, this is clearly playing Counter-Strike actually really, really well. Better than, like I did play it for a little while um, when I was testing it out and it did not play as good as this. This is playing so smoothly. So we're on low settings, 1280 by 800. Right now, it's actually pretty dang playable. 35 FPS. 15 FPS for our 1% low is not great. As long as our actual FPS is 
above 30, the gameplay will actually look pretty smooth. And as long as the 1% lows are not like too terrible. I got a couple hits in before he killed me. Uh, and he got me. It's so hard to dodge an Elden Ring. Um, yeah, so that gives you an idea. 35 FPS in this big open world area with all this foliage and a boss fighting me. You could play this game. You could play Elden Ring, not terribly actually on, on this laptop. I'm not saying it's an ideal performance, but this is native, all right? And let me show you performance when I unplug it. We're, we are now unplugged. I have the power plug here. Um, we are you know, see if this system can handle performance when we're unplugged. So we're getting like the exact same performance, even though we are now unplugged. How cool is that? Um, so you're gonna be able to play for at least, I would say probably two to three hours of games like Elden Ring on this, on this system. That shows you, you can at least play Elden Ring and it's not awful. Like I'm not saying it's a great gaming experience, but it's actually pretty good. Like it's, it's playable. So right now we have uh, FSR2 enabled on quality mode and we are on the low graphics preset. Let's just drop it down to 1280 by 800. All right, but you could run it a little higher, honestly, I think probably and still have a pretty good experience. But right now we're doing 39, 40 FPS. These graphics are obviously not ideal. I would tweak these more. I'd probably try to up the textures until I saw more stuttering. But look at our 1% lows, 28 for our 1% lows. This thing is really smooth. I'm not saying it's gonna be that way in every area of the game, but this is a more demanding area with lots of NPCs. And honestly, it's probably gonna be better in most areas of the game than this. All right, so I've went ahead and reset it. We're gonna go ahead and start our benchmark run. Let's see what we get. <laughs> we have much work to do here. <laughs> Shaboom. All right, we're swimming to the end. Right now we're doing 37, 38 FPS, and we're on battery mode, by the way. I just wanna point out that we are indeed playing on battery mode with both displays enabled right now. 28 watts being utilized on the CPU. 76 degrees on that CPU as well. We ended up with 38 FPS, 29 for our 1% low. That is very playable, all right? And these graphics are actually not that bad. Like. Like these are definitely competitive graphics with something like the Steam Deck or something, you know? Like uh, I'm not saying that it's like better than the Steam Deck. I think the Steam Deck probably has slightly better FPS than this, but still, this is very good. I think it's ex it's exceptionally good for a something that you're gonna take with you on the go. Let's do a quick checkup with how long Windows is estimating our battery life is gonna last right now. It's estimating two hours and four minutes. If you were to play games on this, Maximum brightness right now, or very high brightness level. I'm not sure, let's see what brightness level it is. It's at 80, like 70, it's at 70% brightness right now. Um, at 70% brightness with both displays enabled, Bluetooth on, Wi-Fi on, we're getting about two hours of battery life. So if you were with, with speakers running, um, if you were to play with no speakers running or like headphones and then just Bluetooth or something uh, for like a controller, um, I'm guessing, and your brightness down to 50% or maybe even a little bit less, Wi-Fi off if you wanted to run with Wi-Fi off. I'm thinking you could probably get two and a half, three hours of gameplay in that range uh, with the right optimization. Obviously, probably two hours without any optimization. You're just running it near maximum brightness with everything on. It's obviously nothing amazing. Like it's not as good as a true portable gaming system, but that's actually, I think, pretty good. Right now, we are once again, 1280 by 1800 full screen. Everything's gonna be set to low. Intel XE super sampling. So this is the new Intel technology for super sampling. We'll set it to, let's just set it to balance mode and let's just see what it looks like. I'm not sure if that's gonna work well or not. I haven't tested this, let's find out. Okay, so here we are. We're getting 35 FPS, 21 for our low. That's gonna be pretty playable, but pretty far from you know your ideal gameplay for a shooter game at least. But it's it's that's above like that's above like the bare minimum of what is considered playable 
in these games. If you're hitting more than 30 FPS and your 1% low is above 24, it's going to be pretty smooth overall gameplay. And I'm going to go ahead and blow up some bad guys and shoot some bad guys here in a moment. Um, we'll see how that goes. These graphics look pretty dang gorgeous even on low. It's got a bit of anti-aliasing issues like with little pixelations like around the edges of the palm tree, stuff like that. That's where if you were to turn Intel XE up a little bit higher, you might be able to make it um, a little bit better on the pixelation side of things. So I want you to pay close attention to how smooth everything is um, and how not quite perfectly smooth everything is as well. Let's go ahead and move in. So this is one of the fighting scenes um, early on in the game, but it's very representative of a lot of the combat in the game. We're at 42 FPS, 28 for a 1% lows. I feel like I'm aiming pretty well, but it's obviously not as good as like, not as good as it would be if it was a higher FPS experience. And the gameplay is certainly not as detailed or as smooth as a higher FPS laptop or a gaming laptop would be, but it's not far, you know, from what your experience would be on um, like the Steam Deck, for example. You know, it'd be very similar to what you're gonna have on the Steam Deck. Maybe the Steam Deck would be a little bit higher, a little bit higher settings, and a little bit higher FPS, but it's gonna be in the same ballpark of settings. It's not like you get this versus something like a Steam Deck. You're actually gonna get a pretty comparable experience for just the general um, gameplay running around games like Cyberpunk 2077 or other optimized games that can handle lighter weight um, graphics settings. Um, now that we've shown you that, I wanna show you running Cyberpunk 2077 in the same, we're gonna run Cyberpunk 2077, but in GeForce Now right now. And we're gonna see uh, how well cloud gaming works to handle something like this. The way cloud gaming on GeForce Now works is you have a waiting list. If you're a free gamer like me, I have not paid for a premium account and you have to wait in the queue for people to, to free up servers, basically. It takes a few minutes. Like normally yesterday, I've been, I ran this a few times the last couple of days uh, to test out some different games and experiences. Normally there was like 80 to 100 people in front of me. So 384 is a lot more than what it was. All right, so other cloud game streaming services that you could utilize if you wanted to, you could do, um, for example, remote play. You could do remote play from like my gaming desktop. All right, so we are currently right now, this screen is screaming, uh, streaming from the, the NVIDIA GeForce servers. It is not locally being rendered. It is being rendered away from us. And then it's being streamed to the laptop. What this means is if I were to, if I were to pull up HW info, you'd be able to see Right now, we're only pulling 15 watts of power, 11 watts of power, 12 watts of power. So, uh, and we are on battery mode right now. So what that means is that if you're trying to play a video game and you wanna maximize your battery life when you're unplugged from the wall and you have a good internet connection, game streaming will really optimize your um, battery life to last much, much longer with this notebook. So with this game streaming, you know, first of all, you know, we are playing, let's check out our settings here, right? So we're, we can set this all the way up to 1920 by 1200. We are gonna set DLSS to quality. Since this is on the NVIDIA servers, we are not gonna be able to see uh, exactly the FPS. Um, in the benchmark, we'll run the benchmark here in a second, but it should be well over 45 FPS. It's very smooth to me looking at the, uh, the game here. Like look at the graphics level, it's a higher level of graphics. The details are better and it's a bit smoother. Now, the thing is, there's a slight a slight delay when you're turning and aiming. It's, it's minor, but it is noticeable for me. Um, it's not nothing. And it's not something that you can ignore if you're gonna be playing competitive shooter games. Like if you're playing, if you're just playing a game like this, I think it's something that you could probably eventually ignore or get around, not worry about that much. Um, just a single player game experience is just fine. It's not like it's it, not like it ruins the experience in a single player game. But I would not want to play competitive shooters. Like the graphics, obviously, really nice. Just as good as what you'd expect to have on a gaming laptop, except for the response rate. The response rate is lower. That's the main draw side, the downside here. 
You know, if you're going to primarily be focused on single player games like Cyberpunk, like The Witcher 3, you can play those games on ultra low settings. Elden Ring, you can play those games on the native hardware with this laptop, but it's just, it's not going to be a top tier experience unless you're doing the cloud streaming. Um, and then with the cloud streaming, you need to have good internet connection and you need to have like a good consistent fast internet connection, at least 20 megabits where you're not, where you're not getting cl cluttered. And then from there, you, you basically are pretty much good to go. You need, you need to not be playing competitive games though. That's the thing, not competitive games and a good internet connection. And it'll be a great overall gaming experience using cloud streaming. The great thing about the cloud streaming that I personally really love is, is this, all right? So you can have a game like Cyberpunk being played on the top. You can go to uh, your favorite streaming service down here on the bottom and you can watch something at the same time. I love that. Right here, we can, we can play the live stream, we can do it full screen and we can play the game at the same time. Here we go. Look there. There's the there's the live stream right there, and now we're playing the game at the top at the same time, and it's just it's so cool to me. Like that is that is an awesome feature that uh, gamers that want to watch something while they play, um, or do some other multitasking while they play, they're gonna absolutely love this if you do the cloud game streaming, and it's smooth. Like the gameplay is still smooth up here, it's still good gameplay, and the video is playing smoothly. This is to me like the ideal casual gamer or MMO gamer multitasking type of setup. Better than almost any gaming laptop, except for maybe the Zephyrus Duo 16. Zephyrus Duo 16 can do something similar to this. But I would say this is even better in the sense of multitasking because it's two full-size displays at the same time. I do really, really like that. If you're a casual gamer, this thing's awesome. If you're a student, this thing's gonna be awesome. If you're a competitive gamer, it's not going to be an option for you, all right? This, this is not going to be great for competitive gaming. If you're a, 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 like an office worker or someone who needs to use two screens, so far, it does not get better than this. This is this much screen real estate is bigger than my Blade 18 display. It is bigger. It is noticeably more productive too because it's easy to divide up um, and you can divide it up into quadrants a lot easier. Um, and whole windows can be displayed. The UI interface for windows is much more optimized for this type of interface than it is for a single display. I think that this is a huge product hit. It's gonna be a huge product hit. And I think it's gonna be like comparing this to every other notebook out there. Like it's just, it's such a well executed product in my opinion that it is the best ultra book that you can pretty much get um, just from the nature of its, the productivity of it, um, the multifunctionality of it, there's never been a dual screen display like this that I know of that can easily switch into a tactile keyboard and touchpad experience that feels basically just as good as a normal keyboard ultrabook, almost quite as good, not quite. It's a little bit better on a normal ultrabook, all right? But it's almost as good. And then whenever you want, you can easily switch it into a multi window desktop in the library in the classroom can you imagine popping this out in the classroom and popping this up okay all your all, all your other classmates would be so jealous of you i don't know you might be annoying to some people though because it's so big it probably blocked the view you might have to keep it in the lower mode um when in the classroom i don't know um but like for someone who wants to draw like having the image the thing of the thing you're drawing on the top screen and then uh drawing on the lower screen would be really awesome so let's go ahead and switch into some drawing apps here. Let's test out the pen, Microsoft Paint. It's got new brush, brush features, so it's not as basic as it used to be. This pen does have left, right click capabilities. So there is a, a double clicker here. I'm, I'll bet you you can set the functionality for this, but I'm pretty sure this is a left, right clicker, but I'm not sure exactly all the functionality there. When you get this pen, you do have to unscrew this. All right, so this is a user replaceable battery right here. Looks like it's a, is that a triple A battery? It's a quadruple A battery. Cannot think of a better laptop for a student from a functionality standpoint. This thing, you know, you got your, 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 your stylus. You can take notes with this. You could draw with this. You can change the uh, 
to a calligraphy brush, which is going to be pressure and directionally sensitive. If we wanted to, we could make the size a little bigger. So you can see the calligraphy side of things a little bit. So this is, I'm not, I'm not sure, I'm not an artist, right? I'm not an artist. I can't tell you how good this is, but I can tell you it is pressure sensitive. It is going to be, uh, it feels pretty accurate. It feels like I'm drawing pretty much with a pen. It's got just a slight bit of a delay to it. It does feel very precise. So if you're someone who likes to have a pen interface, you can use this on either screen. So this is something that you can use as a stylus for productivity, as well as something for drawing. And uh, so note, you can use this for hand note taking, you can use this for drawing, you can use this for whatever you're wanting to use it for. Um, I personally am not a huge fan of stylus because I like typing better personally, and I'm not much of an artist. I use Photoshop, I'm a Photoshop guy. Is this thing perfect? I would say no, it's not perfect. Let's talk productivity. Right, I think this is probably the best laptop for productivity that's ever been released. I am a laptop fanatic. I have, I have personally used hundreds of different laptops throughout the years, and I've never seen something like this for productivity. Having two displays is huge for someone who does data entry, who does research, who uses multi-screens, needs to see a calendar on one side while they look at their emails on another screen. Yes, you can split the screen, on a single display. It is possible to split the screen and be a bit more productive that way, but it's not as efficient as having two separate screens, especially if you're needing to use full screen interfaces. Like if you're using Microsoft Excel with Microsoft Word, the, the tools along the top of those applications or Photoshop or um, Adobe Premiere, the productivity aspect of those applications are completely hindered if you're splitting them on a single monitor because you can't see all your tools, you can't access the full image, you're not seeing the full resolution. It's just not as good. It's very hampered on a single screen. So having two full displays to either do portrait or to do vertical, I guess I did it upside down. Let's do it like this. Uh, and then the ability to scroll with all the way up and down across the whole system is insane. It's so cool. And the speakers on this are phenomenal. The webcam on this is phenomenal. The, um, the keyboard, uh, keyboard integration with the software is phenomenal. They did a really, really good job integrating the software from the keyboard to the touchpad interface that can pop up and be resized and used on the fly. So if you don't have a keyboard on the external and you've got it on the keyboard stand, you can easily control this. So let's say that you did not have um, an external mouse like I have right now with me. You just press three fingers in the corner. You bring up this touchpad. Now you can type, right? You can type whatever you want to type here. And then you can use your mouse just like this. You can use it as a mouse. Or of course you can always just use a touchpad. It's just like a giant, huge touchpad, uh, touch screen, like a giant freaking tablet in front of your face. And it's stable enough that you can confidently press the top of the display too. Like I thought this thing was going to fall down any minute, like if I was using this as a touch interface, like you would, you would not be able to use the top display, upper display. You can totally use the upper display as a touch and it's not going anywhere. Like I'm pushing pretty dang hard on this thing and it's stable, right? I'm now I'm like, I'm hitting it and it's still not falling over. It's not coming loose. Um, it feels ex extraordinarily well designed and, and very premium um, of an overall experience. I love that. Is this something that I would actually want or use? Honestly, maybe. Like if I'm traveling and I need to update my laptop spreadsheet, this would be a great way to do that because I'd be able to have laptop listings on one screen and my gaming laptop sheet on the other screen, which is so much better than trying to update it on my Blade 18 alt tabbing between the different windows, all right? So from a dual display perspective and productivity perspective, I have a really strong use case that this is better than any other laptop that I've seen so far. Might actually use this and take it with me um, when I go on trips um, instead of my iPad. From a productivity perspective, how much CPU performance are you dealing with? Well, when it's plugged in, we got 8,300 or approximately, a little, a little over 8,000 in Cinebench R23. A full-fledged gaming laptop, high-end gaming laptop, now does about 30,000, a little over 30,000. Phenomenal performance in the new gaming laptops. But that doesn't mean this is bad. 
this is still get the job done. It's still gonna play games on low resolution, low settings uh, natively on this laptop. Uh, some games obviously are not gonna play at all. That's the reality of it. This is not that powerful natively. And so for those games that are not gonna play natively or you wanna play on higher settings, you're gonna have to do cloud streaming, which is gonna require a great internet connection and casual gaming, because you're not gonna really play competitive games unless you pay for the ultimate version and use an external monitor, which can go up to 120 hertz. Can you do casual gaming on this? Yeah, you could literally do AAA casual gaming on low settings like Elden Ring and certain other titles, like Cyberpunk 2077. Those are decent gaming experiences, native. You play the cloud gaming, you can get really good gaming experiences through the streaming. Productivity wise, it's just not gonna be as fast as a bigger, thicker machine. So if you're if you're a dedicated Photoshop guy or girl or whatever, you're a professional designer, professional video editor, this is not gonna have nearly as much performance as uh, a dedicated system that has an NVIDIA GPU with additional CUDA cores and um, a more powerful CPU. You're gonna get way more performance. If you're after ultimate levels of performance, your, your time is money type of a person, then yeah, this is probably not the ideal solution for you, right? But if you're like a college student, if you're a business professional, if you're a uh, someone that just needs to have something that's great for productivity, great for entertainment consumption, uh, a casual gamer, this can basically meet your needs pretty dang well. Now, if you're a more serious gamer, you're either gonna need a really good connection for the cloud gaming, or you're gonna need to get a gaming laptop so you can have native gaming at full resolution and high settings. So it's not a full gaming laptop replacement for everybody, for sure. It's like a smaller, I would say 25 to 30% of gamers are gonna be super happy with this. Either super casual gamers or people who don't mind lower settings. I really loved the uh, my experience and my time with the Lenovo Yoga Book 9i. Again, this was sponsored by Best Buy, shout out and thank you to them. If you decide the Lo Lenovo Yoga Book is the right choice for you, then I would highly recommend using the link in the description if you wanna support me as a content creator. Um, and thank you very much if you do use that link. It's down there. Um, at $2,000, do I think this is like insane value, such a good deal? Like, no, it's a premium device at a premium price and it's gonna be for people that have the extra money to spare and they're not hardcore gamers, they're not competitive gamers. That's not really what this device is for. This is for general users who need a great dual screen experience and that includes people who might be casual gamers that can use either cloud streaming or the, the low settings in some of the games that they play, depending on the game. This thing feels premium, it feels well built, the hinge is extremely sturdy, the speakers are excellent, the keyboard feels good, really wish the keyboard had a backlight on the keyboard, that's probably the biggest drawback to the keyboard right now in my opinion, but I understand why they didn't do that because there's no power delivery to the keyboard, it is a battery, you have to replace the battery every now and then on the keyboard or maybe charge it up, let's see here, does it have a charger on it? Yeah, it does have a charger. So you can just plug it in. It's a rechargeable chargeable battery on the keyboard. Um, so that's not a problem, but I just wish it had that backlight on the keyboard. That would make this keyboard uh, better for, you know, more pro portable productivity. Like I said, I would love to see a gaming laptop version of this where you get like a 4050, 4060, or 4070 with a little bit higher CPU and uh, a little bit more cooling, maybe a little bit thicker. Like, yeah, 13 inch chassis. You can keep the same chassis, just make it a little bit thicker and put a little higher end components in it. Oh man, I think it would be an awesome way to play games, way to be productive, um, and it would be applicable to a wider set of audience of users. And at that point, it would be really, really, really awesome. Like it, it's it's really awesome, but it's just, it's limited by its lower tier CPU and the fact that it doesn't have an NVIDIA GPU or AMD GPU in terms of what its performance potential could be. So that's kind of like where I'm at with the Lenovo Yoga Book 9i. I think it's awesome, it's not gonna be for everybody, so that's the Lenovo Book 9i. We're gonna end the stream there. I hope you guys found this stream super helpful for anyone that's considering buying this. Again, link in the description down below if you decide to pick up the Lenovo Book 9i. We'll see you guys in the next one. Brandon.